I'm Anitra Terrell, owner of Reflection Design, Afro-modern home decor. And I'm passionate about telling the stories of how we express joy at home using the art and textiles of our roots. So join me as I take a closer look at the lives and homes of men and women across the African diaspora. This is how we live. Hi, I'm Anitra Terrell, and this is How We Live, the show that celebrates the lives and homes of people across the African diaspora. In today's episode, I have the pleasure of speaking with Laquita Tate, a Memphis-based educator, interior designer, and art collector. In this episode, you'll learn the best places to shop for Black art and how to incorporate it into your home, plus a few decorated tips you can incorporate today. So, let's get into it. Hi, Laquita. Welcome to How We Live. I'm so excited and happy to have you here and chat with you, sis. We have been, uh, what do they call it, Insta Sister Friends for the longest time, uh, following each other, supporting each other, sharing each other's work. And so finally be able to almost bring your blog feature to life uh, from ReflectionDesign.com's blog to now here on YouTube is exciting. So thank you for being here with me. Thank you so much for inviting me. I truly appreciate it. And so first off, you have to tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and about your home. Oh, wow. So me, <laughs> I'm a wife, a mother of two grown children. One's 27, one is just turned 29. I'm an educator up until... January the 2nd, I was an elementary school principal. Now I'm a director with a different district. Um, I'm an interior designer, so I'm juggling being an educator as well as juggling being an interior designer. And I've October, I think next, next couple of weeks, I'll be coming up on three years as an interior designer. And so uh, my home, we've lived in this home probably uh, over 15 years now, raised our family here and there grown and gone. Like I said, they're grown. Um, my husband and I have been together since I was 15. So I think now it's 30 years. We've been together, married 25. And so uh, my aesthetic of choice, you can see the wall behind me is black. Uh, so I love black. I love neutrals. I love greens. And so my home, I tried to make it a space where it's a safe haven when I come home. I also want when visitors come to visit me that they feel like it's a place that they can sit. Sometimes they come and they're like, this is a museum. <laughs> like, I can't sit in this house. And I'm like, no, we live here. Like, this is a space where you can live and you can have fun. And so I do try to show that definitely on my Instagram, I try to show how I live in this space, even if it is some beautiful items here. Um, it's a space that I love to call my own, but it is a space that I live in and I thrive in. At least I try to thrive here. <laughs> Laquita, how would you describe your style in three words and who or what influenced that style? Oh, Lord. Let's see. My style, I definitely would say it is cultured. I love Black artwork that's, I mean, throughout my home. I have a lot of local artwork here, but then artists that I found on Instagram and I've fallen in love with, I want to support them and I've, you know, purchased their pieces. Uh, so definitely, it's definitely a culture space. Mid-century modern is my style of choice. So most of the furniture here is mid-century modern with some mix of some other things, but mostly mid-century modern for sure. I do love a moody space. So like I said, blacks, olive greens are definitely uh, my go-to colors. And I do like a neutral palette with pops of color. So, yeah, I know that was probably more than three words to nature, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's me. Very booty, cultured, and mid-century. Yes, ma'am. Okay, 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 okay. I love it, though. And you didn't mention where you were, so you're here in Memphis, right? Yes, ma'am. Memphis, Tennessee, born and raised. And does Memphis play a part at all in your design style or living in the South and all say Absolutely. So just having the Southern roots, uh, strong family dynamics, backgrounds, extending back from, you know, my great grandparents for sure. And then Memphis itself is just a cultural town with roots back into the civil rights era and all of those things. Uh, it's definitely Memphis definitely has a food type network here. 
uh, we have a very close knit creative community here that's definitely inspiring in all things. So definitely Memphis definitely has its roots in my home for sure. And like I stated that a lot of my artwork here is from local artists. I have some local artist friends and I definitely want to support and I buy. Like I'm not trying to get the hookup. I buy what their whatever their fee is. I buy the artwork and I put it in my home. So original as well as prints. Now I'm looking at the piece behind you, and it is stunning. The colors are so bold and so vibrant, and the piece itself is is cultural. And that's one of the things I love about your home is that you are very purposeful and intentional about including black art into your home. Um, why was that important to you? You mentioned you have local artists as well as artists from other areas. Why was it important for you to have black art in your home and so much of it? Because one, I wanted, I want my home to represent the people that live here. I want my children when they growing up, of course, I wanted them to be able to come in and see a space that represented who they were. Uh, when we go out into the world, we know that everybody doesn't look like us. And we know we're going to have certain type of encounters and ter certain type of experiences. So when you come home, you're able to see things that's made by your people that's created with their hands. And I wanted that to be a reflection in my home. I wanted to also be able to walk in my home and be proud of what I see. Like these are my people who have created these things. So even though you see this one piece, this large piece, that's by a friend of mine who is a local artist here, Danny Broadway. But I also have Monica Lewis pieces also behind me who I love, fell in love with Monica on Instagram. And she is probably one of my favorite artists in her, her artwork is throughout my home as well. And like I say, it just represents who I am, uh, represents my home, represents my family, extended and, as well as immediate. And so that's just very important for me to have that representation here in my home. Now, there are so many talented Black artists out there. You mentioned artists you follow Instagram, artists you know locally. You could literally spend hours down the rabbit hole on the internet just looking for inspiration, trying to find artists. How did you go about researching and finding artists that spoke to you and also spoke to how you want your home to feel? So some of it was other people that I follow will recommend other artists or tell you of artists that they have in their home. And so that'll lead me to click on that person's tag and, and go and look and see what I liked. Or it may be a piece of art that another person had and I was like oh I want that let me try to get that in the print or see how much that original is like I want this in my home and so just like you said going down a rabbit hole and then those artists introduce you to other artists and so forth then after a while I start having other artists get in my dms and say hey I know that you're an interior designer or I know that you love black art. I'm a, a artist and so if you're interested or you need something for your client please check out my artwork. And so from that, also, I was able to find some other artwork. I have a, a close friend, one of my best friends. She used to be married to an artist. So going to art shows was definitely one of our things. And her ex-husband is friends with the one who, who did this artwork here. Dan and Broadway, they were good friends. And then Dan and I went to the University of Memphis together. And so just through those connections and learning about art, and going to those art shows and then doing Black History Month at the University of Memphis, we always had a Black artist that did our posters. And so I learned about different artists at that time as well. And so it's just, you know, it just represents me and it just makes me feel good that I have these pieces in my home. And I'm like, I don't have room for any more, but, you know, I'm on the lookout for some artwork. I was like, now it's time to just kind of switch it up and change it around because it's just other pieces that I, lo I love. And so you've had a lot of pieces. And I remember when I revisited your blog post, um, I'll link uh, the original home tour of Laquita's home down below. But when I revisited, I was looking through all the photos and thinking, man, every from your office to your bedroom, to the, even to the kitchen, which is one of those places that people may, may or may not think to really go, go all in in terms of art. But you have two pieces, two large black and white pieces in your kitchen that are off the chart, just, just, so it was hard for me to choose a favorite, but those two are, they're, they're at the top of my list. My question 
is do you have a favorite piece of art in your home and who would who's it by? Oh my goodness, Nietzsche. <laughs> So I do, and then the pieces you're talking about is about an artist by the name of G. Horton. So I have those two black and whites from him, and then I have another one up in my guest room by the same artist, black and white, but it's of a black boy with gold teeth. I absolutely love it. Like when you walk in their room, it's like, I absolutely love it. But one of my favorite pieces, like really I love every, every piece in my home. Um, but one piece by Christina Martinez, she goes by the name of So Trio on Instagram. And that piece, one of my besties, Alvin Wayne, another interior designer, purchased for me for Christmas. And uh, Christmas on my birthday last year. And I absolutely love that piece. And I actually have it in my, uh, we have an open floor plan with the kitchen, a hearth room, and a breakfast area so it's in there in an acrylic frame so you can see all of the details so that's one of my favorites now when we hear the term art collector with someone who collects art it sound can sound intimidating it can sound expensive too <laughs> um what would your advice be to someone who wants to get into collecting black art but may not have a big budget to, to start yeah, so for that person, I definitely would say go to visit your, your fairs, your art fairs. A lot of times the art fairs will have artwork, prints, and originals that are reasonable and within budget. Start small. You don't have to go out and purchase a big piece like I have behind me. You can start very small, even postcards. with. So sometimes you go to art show, and the artist there will have a postcard talking about the artwork. I ha In my kitchen, you talked about you typically don't see artwork in the kitchen. From an art show that I went to, I have the postcard in a frame. That's artwork. So you don't have to go and spend a whole lot of money to get started. You don't ever have to spend a whole lot of money to get art. You just have to be wise about your choices. So go to a fair, start there. You can also, local artists, a lot of times, especially start out, the artwork is very reasonable. Very reasonable. And so... Purchase from them. Purchase you a piece. Prints, of course, are more reasonable price than an original. Or I'm not going to say that an original is not reasonable price. It's, re it's the price that it is, so it's reasonable. But a print is going to be a little less than an original piece. And so get some prints until you can save up and get you an original piece. And then just collect over time. You don't have to go out and try to get 100 pieces to fill your house in one walk. So do that over time, and it could take years. It took years to collect this artwork. And I notice, you know, people often think, well, I, I want to get art, but, you know, what do I do with the walls themselves? And you, I've noticed, again, behind you, have this rich, deep black color. Some people are like, yes, I'm, I'm there for it. Other people are like, oh, I don't know if I can paint my walls black. Um... When bringing art into your home, how can you, what's, what's some of the other ways you, you can, I guess, prepare the walls or prepare the room itself for the art that you're going to introduce into it? Yeah, so definitely I know going black, including black on my trim. So it's, you won't see a white chair railing or uh, a white uh, trimming around my door. It's black also, and a lot of times in my designs, when I paint a room, I'm painting the trim. I'm painting all of it because I don't want anything to stick out. So think about this. So if you do decide to paint, I suggest painting the trim as well. So you just have everything just seamless. You don't have anything that sticks out and going to distract from the artwork. So that's one choice. Another thing you can do if you don't want to do a dark moody color, because of course, to me, black it's just one of those colors that everything pops off of. I mean, it just pops and it definitely makes sure your eye is looking at the artwork. Uh, but also wallpaper. Wallpaper, it can get expensive, but you can do some pill and stick so you don't, you're not married to it. Um, you can, it, it comes down very easily. So pill and stick you can do if you don't want to go all out with the black. I mean, even an all white room. And you do a nice gallery wall to fill up your wall with some beautiful artwork. White is, is a gorgeous color as well and, and does very well with artwork as well. So you don't want to go all out and go bold like your girl. Uh, go, you can do white. 
Now, at Reflection Design, our mantra is see yourself at home. Thinking about all the elements in your home, from the art to the furniture to the, the plants to the people. How does your home reflect who you are and how you live in it? So definitely my home, in my opinion, <laughs> is very warm and cozy. Uh, I think that we are very laid back people. We like to have a good time. We laugh. My husband is a comedian in his own right. Uh, so we're always laughing, always having a good time. Um, it's definitely a place where I can retreat to and him as well. Cause it's just us two. We're empty nesters now, uh, can retreat to, can get some work done, can be creative, creative outlet. Uh, so the black, the greens, cause I have tons of plants here in my home to over a hundred. Uh, and it just represents our love of nature. We we love um, vertical pieces, things that are wild, like horizontal. They grow wild uh, because I don't believe things. everything has to be structured. Um, I think that things should just kind of flow organically and authentically. And I think that my home represents that. Well, I love it. And throughout this conversation, we'll be sharing photos of Lucita's home. You you can also see more portals on the original blog feature, which is tagged below. So you can take in all of the beautifulness, the warmth. It's it's warm. It's chic. It's cultural. Um, it's it's your home and it's gorgeous. Um, Thank you. Let's get into our lightning round, shall we? We shall. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ask you a few questions. I want you to give you the first answer that comes to mind. Okay. Question one, if your home had a theme song, what would it be? Energy by Beyonce. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, do you want me to tell you why or just bless it go right? <laughs> but that song speaks for itself. That song speaks for that. Oh, okay. Come on. Okay. <laughs> uh, you're decorating a room and you hit a creative roadblock. This could be for yourself or a client. What's one thing you do? to get inspired? I call my bestie, my, my interior design friend, Alvin. I always call him and he helps me get over whatever creative roadblock I have. Fill in the blank. Laquita's home is always open. Okay. Okay. A biopic is made about your life who would you select to play you? My goodness. <laughs> Nidra. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Death is a hard one. Who would I get to play me? <laughs> now I could say play people like Viola Davis, but that doesn't even <laughs> I'm and it's because she comes to mind with the Woman is King movie. Uh, that we're going to go see today. Uh, <laughs> so she comes to mind because she's a powerhouse. And I definitely uh, look, to, look at her as inspiration for just the possibilities that are endless in this world. She is. That's that's a great choice. Love her. Uh, yes. um, <laughs> when traveling, whether domestically or abroad, what's the one thing you always bring back? Oh, a shot glass. <laughs> Okay, LaQuiz. Well, and it's not because I, I drink a lot. It's because <laughs> it has, but just because it has the name of typically where you're at. And so I just collect them. If you grow, if you like to clean your fly glasses bag, you, you grow. You I like to be nester now. <laughs> hey, you don't have to explain to us. Fly glasses. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Receive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is one design book that you would recommend for us? A design book? Oh, the one, uh, Brown Bohemian. One. Love them. Love them. Love them. Love them. That's a good one. And their, mm -hmm. their aesthetic is, it's interesting you, you chose that one because their aesthetic is, it's almost at the other end of the spectrum. There are, there are a lot of neutrals and tans and 
Yes. So black gangster. So that yes, I now I layer a lot. I do a lot of texture and they are te- I like I love a lot of their stuff is just like the same color palette. Like it's all neutral, but it's it, they play up with the texture and the different types of browns and creams. And I mean it's it's beautiful, beautiful work. And if you ever come to Atlanta, uh of course you have to let me know. Yes. I'm but also, <laughs> but also they have a store here in the Park uh, City Market. Mm-hmm. Wow, I'm ready to go check it out. Yes, I'm coming soon. Seriously, I mean that's but five and a half hours away. So I'm coming okay. to visit. Okay, I'm coming to visit you and Amber. I'm now let me see some pictures of you on the ground kicking me. Can't end up here. I'm like, oh why wow, she was there? Asking. <laughs> I wouldn't do you like this. I'm coming <laughs> to see you, Nitra. <laughs> uh, where can we find you online? So Instagram at Quita Tate, Q U I T A T A T E. I also have a blog and a website, which is just www.thequitatate.com. Thank you so much, Laquita. As, as always, it's so nice to talk to you and see you. Your energy is always supportive and positive and just fun, which I appreciate and genuine. Let me not forget that. And genuine. So I thank you so you. much, Anitra. Thank you. And I appreciate you. And this is how we live. Yeah, right. Thanks. That we feel. <laughs> thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And to add more style and culture to your home, shop ReflectionDesign.com.